Hey everyone, Tim with the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor there is Junior Mount. And as always, on behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation, and myself, we want to offer you an open invitation to come out and be with us for service. Our service times are as follows. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m., we come back at 6 p.m. for our evening service, and of course we have also a midweek service Wednesday night at 7 p.m. So make plans, if at all possible, to come out and be with us. If you have church service on a different night, uh, make plans to come out and visit with us. And uh, as always, <laughs> we try, purpose in our heart, promise, <laughs> we try to get out and uh, visit with you guys at uh, the other churches and uh we don't always make it, but we <laughs> purpose in our heart. We try, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we do. We do, and we're planning on trying to make it to several different churches. Uh, it's one of the benefits, and uh, you know, of course, we always miss a home church when we're away. But we do, as 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 evangelists, you know, we try to uh, get out and uh, visit our uh, sister churches and uh, and. Uh, just uh, worship and, uh, you know, opportunity arises to uh, preach at one of these other churches. You know, we're certainly, that's what we're, you know, called to do one of the several callings that we're to do. And uh, I believe one of the several callings that the Lord has placed upon our life, you know, that we're to do. And uh, we try to fulfill them. And uh, that's the will of God that we're supposed to do. And uh, we try to do it with our whole heart. And, uh, uh you know, the enemy, of course, the enemy's going to fight and push against, and, you know, that's why we're to, that's why it's talked about in the very end, you know, we're going to be, got to press forward, because the enemy is certainly not going to stop pressing back against us, so, you know, he's, if you allow him to, he's going to press and press and press and push you so far back that you get to that point. You get to that point where it's like you just try to throw up your hands and just give up. Friends, don't give up. Now is not the time to give up. Press back. Fight against. Remember what we talked about in the last video. Turn the tables around. Declare open war against the enemy. He's declared open war against you. He doesn't want you to make it. He doesn't want you to enter in to the joys of life we talked about. He doesn't want you to go to heaven. He doesn't want you to see that new heavens, that new earth, that new Jerusalem coming out of him. He doesn't want you to enter into rest. He wants you to go to that place that the devil is going to be and those enemy those the enemy is going to be the demonic spirits all the fallen angels that lake of fire that's going to be burning and with all nations and all people that forget god it's going to be burning for eternity no 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 respite no break everlasting punishment and torment more needs to be preached about that today than used to people believed it nowadays people don't teach it they don't teach repentance they don't teach the blood of christ all that needs to be preached. All that needs to be taught about. It needs to be put back into the churches. Nowadays, all you're hearing is fluff Christianity. Just come on in. Pay your tithes. Shake the preacher's hand. Just come in the churches. Be good. Just be good. Pay your tithes and be good. That's all you have to do. Don't worry about it. Just come on in. Sit. You know, clap your hands. You know, let the song leader just lift you up and get you all excited. And, and you know, we'll have a little bit of a mini concert. And the pastor's going to get up and, you know, he's got a, a sermon written down. He can just read from and flip over the back and read from it. And he'll dismiss and he'll get you out by noon so you can get to the steakhouse or get to the lake or get whatever you want to do, you know, or something like that. And that's my almost the only service they have during the week. Now, there's some that's still having service on Sunday night or Sunday morning, Sunday night. Some Wednesday night. Am I, am I slamming these yards, mega churches, all of them? No, I can't say that. Because some of them, I don't know what they're preaching and teaching, but some I do. Some I do. Some I've seen on television and know the doctrine that they preach and teach. Some I've been to and I've seen the doctrine and heard the doctrine that they preach and teach. Some of them I know that they've the enemy has already got them. So I know and what doctrine that they preach and teach enemy's got you he doesn't need to fight against you he's already got come in come in at the back went all the way through and he's already got behind the pulpit he's already got that church he doesn't need to fight against and press against that church anymore he's already got them. well brother tim my gosh you're slamming against the churches well 
we need to come back to the old fashioned altar of repentance and repent once again and come back and do our first works again. And those first works is bring repentance and the blood of Christ back back in the churches again and fight back against the enemy. That's what he's come in. He's subtle. Comes in. It's like a serpent. Comes in real sly. That's how he gets in the churches real sly. It starts talking. Starts, you know, you know, just whispering in the ear. That's how a lot of it happens. Comes in, starts whispering, and just goes from person to person. And it's like an infection. It just goes through the crowd. And it just ends up behind the pulpit into the deacon board. That's what happens. Do I, do I like to talk about that and have to mention that and bring that up? No, I hate it. But that's what's happening in the world of today, in the church environment, in the churches of today. People, as I've said this word, the church Andy, and a lot of people are coming out of that, thank the Lord. You wish they would turn around, but some of them, the enemy has already got them. They're not going to change. They're too happy the way they are. They've got this other belief system in place. Got, you know that we talked about, the uh, the easy believes believism, if I can talk, the cheap grace, the, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, just, you know, the cheap grace, just, e you know, easy believism, believism. I can do this, I can do that, I'm okay. You know, the uber grace. not going to change. It's too comfortable to them. As I said, certainly, yeah. It's easy. Come in. Don't have to change. Don't have to change your lifestyle. Sure. That's easy. That's that's that's, that. you know, that's fun. That's fine. <laughs> we can do that. I can do that. I don't have, if, I don't, if I don't have to change my lifestyle, I can just do that. As long as I show up to the church and pay my tithes. And I'm fine. I don't have to change anything. Well, sure. I can do that. Some other religions that, or denominations rather, that uh, that do that, I can mention. But I'm not going to, no point. But this hyper grace situation, and this irresistible grace, I tell you, that's not biblical. That is not biblical. But it's being taught as the truth that's you know what's one thing one of the reasons I know that we're in the last day is because these doctrines are being preached false teachers false Christ false prophets are abounding throughout the land popping up each and every day you know that's why we're seeing that is why people friends we are seeing a lot of these home churches being set up because people are so tired they're so tired of seeing these churches filled up with the lies of the devil. And so they're creating these home churches, and you know what? Good for them. Kudos to them. Let's give them a good hand clap. So, you know, they can get back to a strong, biblically-based truth, and they get now this church system that the enemy's already got. You know what? I hope some of these churches turn around. But you know what? I'm afraid a lot of these churches have become the Laodicean church. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the book of the Revelation and read it the very first, the, the first and second chapters about the uh, first, second, third chapters about the uh, the, uh, the seven churches of Asia. Read about the last church, the Laodicean church. And read about that and, th and read that and think about today's church. Now, a lot of people say, well, I was talking about the churches back then. But read, in fact, why don't you just go ahead and read about all those churches and think about the churches nowadays because it's talking about the churches today as well not just the churches back in that day it, it means the churches back in that day but all through history including today because you can look you can look at those churches today and line them up with it, each and every one of those it's talking about funny how it works that way seems like that was written down there for a reason hmm <laughs> it was for us to know too It's for us as well. Amen. 
it was for us as well. It was prophecy for us to know as well that it was going to happen in these last days that we're in. Are you ready to go? The Lord calls you home right now. Are you ready to go? One of the most important questions you can ask yourself right now is, are you ready to go? No, I'm not saying that the Lord splits the, you know, the sky open and, you know, the dead in Christ rise, for, raise first, and we that are alive and remain, or when we call up, with, no, no, no I'm, I'm talking about, are, are you ready to go around? If you fall over dead of a heart attack, or you go down the road and you're in an accident, are you ready to go? I'm talking about that old time preaching spirit of God that's settled upon the men of God in these last days that's going to preach the true word of God and you know that you need to get to an altar of repentance wherever that altar of repentance is. It doesn't have to be inside the church because the Lord can save you on the spot no matter where you are. If he's calling you to that repentance, the altar of repentance, wherever it is, then you can be saved. But can you say right now that, that you're saved? That if you die, however it is, whatever it is, however it happens, that you're going to make heaven your home. That you're going to enter into those joys that's coming. Not just heaven, that you're going to be wherever the Lord Jesus is. The new heavens, the new earth, new Jerusalem, wherever the Lord Jesus is, you're going to be with him for eternity. And the pure in heart, it says, is going to see God. Can you say that right now? Well, we're just getting out. We're just, whew, man, the gate opened and we just went right out, didn't we? <laughs> we like that. We like that. When the Spirit of God starts moving, starts going, hey, that's what we like. That's what we want. Because if the Spirit of God's not in it, then we need to check ourselves. If the Spirit of God doesn't go from the top head to the sole of our feet, then we need to start praying. We need to seek the Lord while He may be found. We need to seek those spiritual gifts. We need to seek the wisdom, the spiritual understanding, or the spiritual knowledge and the understanding. We need to seek after those gifts of the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said he'd send back the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus said, I've got to go away because he said, if I don't go away, then the Comforter won't come, the Holy Ghost. But he did go away. He ascended back to the Father and he sent the Holy Ghost back, back at Pentecost. Guess what? He's still for us today. We'll accept it. We'll seek after it. When you gain it, there's gifts to be given. We're still being called to preach. Men are still being called to preach and do things. Now, I know we have a pastor. We have a watch. He's one of our watchmen all, but I still consider myself a watchman because there are things that are coming. There are things that right now I can see coming in the spiritual and in the natural that I, I don't speak about right now because guess what? The time is not yet. It's not yet. I, I need to seek the Lord about it, and, but the Lord has said not yet. It's not time yet because I have a, a parallel type ministry. I'm not bragging. I don't brag. I, if I boast, it's in the Lord. I, I do nothing. I can do nothing of myself. It's only of the Lord. Okay? Nothing of myself. It's only of the Lord. Only through His Spirit can I do anything. It's only through His Spirit that I can preach, teach, know anything of God's Word. His Word is spiritually discerned. It's it's for <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, nothing for the natural man. The natural man can get nothing out of the Word of God. Out of the Word of God can discern that. He can just look at it and say, well, what is this? What does this mean? What does this mean? People have done that, looked at it, looked and read it and said, what does this mean? What does, I don't get this. What's that? It's because it's spiritually discerned. Only the Spirit of God working through you, giving you wisdom, spiritual knowledge, and what? The understanding of God's Word. Only through that can you get that and get the understanding. But today we are going to be in the book, well, <laughs> Imagine that. The book of Psalm. Just like I touched, what was it, when, last, this past Wednesday night, I was preaching. That's like, I get the Lord puts me in the book of Psalm, and that's where I stayed like, for, for a long time. 
and uh, you know, I, I get, get out of them and go to different other books and everything, but it seems like I get drawn back to the book of Psalms. You know, Lord's will, okay? That's what, that's what we're going to do, what the Lord wants us to do. But we're going to be in Psalm 143 and verse 1. Psalm 143 and verse 1. And it reads, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness. Now, now listen, let's listen to this here. It says, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. And in thy faithfulness, answer me in thy righteousness. So we're praying to the Lord. We're begging the Lord. Give ear to my supplications. Give ear to my prayer. In my time of trouble. In my time of trial. In my time of tribulations. My time of need. When I'm sick. When I'm when there's not enough money in the bank to pay for the bills, when there's not enough money to pay for the doctor visit, when there's not enough money, to, when your car's broken down, when there's not enough money, or when you're in time of need, when you, you know, just any time, anything that's going on that you don't have a way to be, there's nothing, nobody else can help you, and you don't have a way. It may, it doesn't have to be money, it can be anything. Lord, give ear to my supplications, and in thy faithfulness, and guess what that means, in his faithfulness his faithfulness which he is always faithful he is always listening to you when you are in his will if you're out of his will guess what the communication is broken you must ask for forgiveness you must repent from your sin the same way if you have never been saved the only prayer that the lord is going to hear from you that god is going to hear from you is the sinner's prayer, the repentant prayer. And then after that, guess what? You have an open line of prayer with with God through the Lord. And what does he say? He does. So he says, if you ask it in my name, he says, in the name of Jesus, you ask it in my name, then my Father will do it for you. That would I do for you. You got to ask, got to ask it in the name of Jesus. I hear a lot of people pray, said, and do this and do this and, 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 and uh, uh, in uh, yeah, uh, Amen. Or in uh, in in your name, Amen. Well, you know, it says to ask it in Jesus' name, and that what I do. So you've got to put that in there. There's there's a, there's, there's a way to ask. The correct way to pray. The Bible instructs us the way to pray. Lord taught us. Even the disciples said, "Lord, teach us how to pray." And he told him. He told him that. He gives us instructions. So it says, and in thy faithfulness, and the, is the Lord always faithful to hear us? If we're not standing with him, if we're living a humble, a prayerful, repentant life, walking in his will, yes, he always hears us. That's if we're living that repentant, humble life, walking before him. Not living a life <laughs> of that sinful life that everything's okay no matter what I do and I'm just you know doing this and that and you know I'm listening to this guy behind the pulpit telling me that it's okay if I do a little bit of sin each and every day that oh you're okay if you just do a little bit of sin each and every day that's okay God excuses that God does not excuse sin I don't care what any man tells you God does not excuse sin each and every day just a little bit just a little white lie, just this and that. God does not excuse sin. Tell me where it says in his word that he excuses sin, that it's okay to that it's okay to sin. What did the Lord Jesus die for? If it's okay to sin just a little bit more and less each and every day. What did he die for? He died for, for our sins that we might have right to the tree of life, to, might right, have right to go to heaven. To put the sin, our sins, under His blood, that we might be made white as snow, might be made whole from top to head, the sole of our feet, to have our sins forgiven. Now, I'm saying that we're going to be totally lily, lily white, clean, the, our, our entire life. No, the devil's going to put snares in front of us. This flesh is temptable, but the Lord does say, and you've heard me say it time and time again. Press, we're to press in and to strive for the perfecting of the saints. 
Now, let me tell you something. That, that does not tell me right there by saying that, that it says that it's okay more and less each and every day, that, oh, it's okay to sin just a little bit each and every day. That's a false doctrine. That's a lie. You hear somebody say that, I don't care if they're, it says if, if Paul said, if, if somebody comes to, even an angel from heaven comes to you preaching any other doctrine than what we preached, he said, let them be accursed. So if you hear anybody, even a preacher that says that, says something like that, says something foolish like that, a false doctrine, then you say that you're accursed. What? This guy, this the, 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 he's been on. He, you know, he's got a, he's got a, a televised ministry on Sunday morning, a local televised ministry, and I've seen him out. And there's people that's oh, look at that, look at so and so, and everything. Yeah, if you're a Christian, you're walking in God's will, and you know the Word of God. You go up to him and ask him, and he says something like that. You say, God, God says, let you let you be accursed. Yeah. Be bold in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Let the Word of God, you give them the Word of God. Be bold in the Lord. Don't start a fight. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. But He needs to be told. Whoever needs to be told the Word of God. Right? You know, we if you know to do good and do it or not, it says it's sin unto us. If you see somebody that's spreading a false doctrine and you have the opportunity to try to set someone straight like that, did not Paul confront Peter in the Bible? You know, when he was with the Jews, he was doing stuff with them. He was, you know, doing their the feasts and everything like that and, you know, kind of, you know, backing himself off from the Gentiles, but with when he was with the Gentiles, he was doing stuff with them and patting them and, uh, you know, doing their stuff and backing him, backing himself away. Basically, he was riding the fence with both of them. And Paul, he said, when he come, <laughs> when he come, paraphrasing, but when he come to town, he said he would, he was to Peter to his face and said, you're to blame, Peter. Oh, if we could all have the boldness of Brother Paul. And have the uh, have the testimony of Brother Paul, have the the authority that Brother Paul had to come in and say, "This is what we're doing. This is what God says we're going to do." And guess what, people, we're doing it. That's what this that is the boldness that we have to have in the Lord, brother. You know. This politically correct environment, you know, you want to offend somebody. Okay. If it's the word of God, it's not you. It's it, that, you know, it, it's, you know, they can be mad at you all, all they want. If it's the word of God, then, they're, you know, they're, it's, it's not you they're mad at. <laughs> you know what? Lord said, you know, don't be, don't be surprised. Don't, don't, don't be surprised. They hate you. So they hated me first. They're going to hate you the same way. You know, let them let them come into the church. You know, you preach against sin. Let some of the sodomites come in. You preach against them. Right now, as long as you have it written down in your bylaws that you do not support same-sex marriages, you do do not support sodomy. As long as you have it written down in your bylaws, you cannot, right now, at least for now, subject subject to change, probably in the future. Right now, as long as you have it written down. In your bylaws, you cannot be forced to accept that. Like I said, now that could be subject to change at some point in the near future, because you know, if so at some point that's going to happen. You know that because they're already going into businesses, as we've seen, and they're doing lawsuits and and they're winning. They're you know they're winning sums of money, and the person has to do what they want them to do. So, how long before it's going to come into the churches? Maybe not during this presidency, maybe in the next one, because I got a feeling this, this, it's going to flip to the other side. Next presidency, next tour. I don't know, I don't know that. Who knows? Maybe we're not even going to be around during this next one. We just don't know. But I'd, I'd say that 
you know, for a reason. You know, like I said, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe someone's going to come in. Who, who knows? It may be so whoever's listening to this. It may be your church that they come in and throw a big tantrum fit because you point out something or mention something against sodomy or something. And then they're going to throw a big fit. Bring lawyers into it and everything like that. And But you can just point out and say, we don't support this. And then you could be in the middle of a big lawsuit. And then you have to rec and end up end up uh, they end up changing it, and, and then the churches will have to recognize it. And if you don't, they'll have to take away your your uh, your tax status, your five hundred one three C whatever it is. Well, you know what? Good. I don't want the government. I don't want them to have any say in the church. You know what? Good. Get go on. Take your tax status away. Lord will provide. We can pay taxes for the land. That's right. That's okay. The Lord will provide. He always does. Don't have to worry about it. Don't need you. Don't need your tax status. You know I, that's fine. If the sodomites want to come in, that's fine. We're not barring them out of there. But guess what? They cannot take part in anything until guess what? They make a stop by that altar and turn away from their filthy ways. Their abomin their abominable ways. Old and New Testament, what they're doing is an abomination before the Lord. Plain spoken. Sorry, that's the way it is. Hate me if hate me if, if you want to, but you're going to hate God's word because that's what it says. That's what the Lord says. It's an abomination in the sight of God. Boom, there it is. You can come in. Don't hate anybody in that way. Don't hate anybody that's a sinner that's done stuff. But I hate the sin. You love the person. You want to see them turn to the Lord. You want to see them get saved. You want to see them saved and so that, that they'll enter the kingdom of God. But you hate that sin. You want to see it wiped away and cast out. And you want to see that person saved, washed clean. <laughs> Just like the man that had the legion cast out. You want to see him clean, clothed in the right mind, and sitting at the feet of Jesus. Amen. In thy faithfulness, answer me. How how many times has the Lord answered us and has been faithful to us? How many times? Just think about it. Just think about it in your life. How many times has he been faithful to you? When you've prayed, when you've asked, when you've said, Lord, help me. I need your help. Right now, Lord, this is this has come up. This is due. I, I have a need. Lord, I know you're faithful. I know you can move. Pray, and the Lord moves in a miraculous way. Even you get surprised. And he sometimes moves further than you think he's going to move, beyond abundance. Sometimes it may not be right when you think it is. It may be later, but there's a reason why he does it later than sooner. But he does move. He's faithful. But let me ask you this. When he wants you and asks you to do something, how faithful are you to do something for him? Are you available or do you make yourself available to do something for him? Well, Lord, I don't know. I'm just, I, I don't know. I've got this to do and, you know, I really want to do this and, just don't know if I can make the time because, you know, so and so. Well, I'm supposed to go do this with so and so, and you know, I'm, you know what? I'm just kind of tired, and I'm, I don't know. I'm just you know, I really wanted to, you know, you know. Instead of doing the video, Lord, I just I'm you know, there's something on something on TV I wanted to watch, and I just don't much feel like it. And you know, how faithful are we when the Lord wants us to do something or impresses upon us to do something? Are we showing any faithfulness to the Lord when he wants us to do something? I think I mentioned in the last video, oh, are we the kind that those Lord, you know, pulls out the Lord like an old, you know, a nice comfortable pair of shoes and, you know, after we're done with him, you know, say, okay, Lord, we're done with you. So, and just toss him at the back of the closet and shut the door until the next time we decide we need him. Or are we of that class? 
we are, shame on us. It's horrible. God's not an old pair of comfortable shoes that's going to sit in the back of the closet until you need him. If he's not number one in your life, then he's not in your life. He doesn't take back seat to anybody, anything, no how, no way. He's number one. First thing in the morning, what do you think? When you wake up, do you think, thank you, Lord, for another day of waking up on this side of eternity? Another breath of life, another beautiful day that you've given us or given yourself, given me to wake up and to serve you, to walk with you, to talk with you as a friend. He counts you as a friend. If you're saved, walking in God's will, he counts you as a friend. That still amazes me. I think I said in the last video, video, that amazes me. A friend to God, to Almighty God. Gentiles, as I said, didn't used to have such a privilege as, as, as we do. Yet we count this as, eh, nah. A privilege such as that. I, I, uh, even, that, that doesn't even... A measure up to, my, to the thought and the how how that makes me feel, and I'm sure you out there make you feel in your heart to even say that to even say that that's a privilege that 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 doesn't even glorify and give him praise enough to say that that we walk with him as a friend that he considers us a friend. How how do you say something, enough, or say enough, or or use words enough to glorify? The Lord. There's, there's, I don't think there's really any, uh, words to express that. I really don't. None comes to mind to glorify who He is and what He's done for us, and to to say that, and to give Him the glory that He's due and honor and praise and worship. Counts us as a friend. And also think about it. We are joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs to the throne of God with Christ. We are going to be priests and kings. We're going, the Bible tells us, we're going to be judging angels. And all we have to do is believe. No, 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 wait a minute, don't get me wrong. We believe. Okay? Yeah. Salvation, grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we will have, we will have good works. After that, after we've, we've, we've gotten saved, we will have good works after that. The Lord has called us to be workers in the field. Amen. Right? And as I said earlier, you know, if we, if we know to do good and do it not, it is sin unto us. So we are to do the works. Amen. But think about it. Think about it. What we have inherited once we become saved. Think about all that we've inherited and think about all that we have right now. You know the old saying, I think I mentioned before, you know, I'm saved, I'm being saved, and I shall be saved. You know, same thing, you know, I'm, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And that sanctification, that just doesn't stop at a certain point. It will continue on all the way till we leave this shell, this body. And that's a work that only the Lord can do. I can't do that myself. I can't go through and just sanctify myself. It has to be through the Spirit of God coming through and cleaning me out and sweeping up and clean me out. You know, when I got saved, you know, the, the, if the enemy is in me, he, he had to go out. All the junk that was inside of me, it's cleared out, and it's still being cleared out. Sometime I might have a bad thought or something like that, and I say, Lord, forgive me, and he you know, has to clear that out and sweep that out. But when you ask for forgiveness, the Lord's Spirit comes up and takes a boat inside of your heart. 
old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You become a new creation, a new creature in Christ. It takes up a bold in here. It changes you from the inside out. Now, good things come out. All the bad things of old are gone. You still have the ability and propensity to commit sin. Yeah, because, like I said, in this flesh. But now, guess what? You have, and as I always say, with, with due respect to the Holy Ghost, you have the Holy Ghost as that safety catch. When you're ready to just blast somebody because they've made you angry, the Holy Ghost is like, stop. Remember who you are, who you represent. stop you think forgive me Lord I don't want to do that because you're inside of me I'm your representative you're my king you're my Lord my Savior and I represent you I'm a Christian I'm supposed to be Christ like and I don't want to do that your safety catch tells you not to do it now can we override that yeah, you can, and that's you get in trouble after that. And then you have to do some, and you have to have, do some heavy repenting. But thank the Lord that we are able to, we are able to repent if we do that. And some people take advantage of that though. Well, I can repent, and do that. See, that's the wrong attitude to have in the first place. But see, if I just do it, I can just repent. You don't understand the grace and all that. person does that and goes with that belief as we were talking about earlier what's being preached is that well I more or less sin every day just as long as you just you know just at the end of the day just you know just do a quick you know Lord forgive me okay explain to me this what if you do that and you lived in sin the entire day what if you die before you make it home and do your little ceremony of asking for forgiveness? Where are you going to be when you die? They didn't tell you that, did they? Or did they preach you that? Tell you that? No, they were probably too busy watching the offering plate being passed around to see who all was given an offering plate while, you know, Bad situation. Church is in trouble these days. If you're in a situation like that, let me tell you something. You might seriously consider, if you want the church preaches the Word of God and the Bible, you might start seeking around, asking the Lord, if you're wanting to live a holy, separated, consecrated life unto the Lord, the Lord sending you somewhere that preaches and teaches the Word of God, and get out of that junk. And I'm not hot, and I'm not pulling anybody out where the Lord has you. But if let me tell you something, if he, I don't think he's going to have you in a place that's telling you lies, or has a false prophet or false teacher behind the pulpit. If you truly want the Word of God preached to you and taught to you, you pray to the Lord. He He'll send you somewhere where you'll get the Word of God preached to you, the true Word of God. If you truly want it and you truly seek are seeking after the word of God and the truth being preached to you. The Lord can move you somewhere where you'll where you'll get that. And I don't and I'm not pushing any place. I'm saying you pray to the Lord for him to show you and send you somewhere. So are we faithful to the Lord? Are we are, are we as faithful to him as he is to us? I hazard to say no. <laughs> Ninety percent of the time, if not closer to a hundred, I'd say a lot of time. He is absolutely one hundred percent faithful to us when we are not to him. In verse two it says and enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living no man living 
be justified. Now talking about in the Old Testament, still doing the sacrifices and all that stuff. Talk about no living man be justified. Well, think about it. now we are justified in the spirit. Our soul, when it goes, leaves, it's going back to the Father. Justified through the death of Christ. Hallelujah. We didn't have to go through anything. Now, we may have to go through some persecutions and tribulations before we see or hear enter into the joys of life. You know, we're true, the true and faithful servant. But you know what? Who knows? Who knows what's coming? We may be, my generation, people, we may be out of here before the heavy tribulation. I don't know. I can't say. And I'm not going to say. Unless the Lord strongly puts it on my heart to say something like that. You know, I'm not going to say that I'm a prophet or anything like that. Because I'm not. Unless the Lord give me, a, like I said, a strong message to, to give to people, to give to the church or anything like that. I'm not doing that. I know it's closer yesterday or today than it was yesterday. And I see the signs that God's word gives us. That's all I can go by. Bless the Lord gives me special wisdom and knowledge, a special view of things by revelation, by a dream, by vision, you know, something. But thank the Lord he justified us through his death on the cross. Not going to see corruption. Don't have to worry about a devil's hell. Wasn't made for us. The Bible tells us the hell wasn't made for us. We were meant to live eternity. We were originally meant to live in the garden. You know, how the earth was. Imagine, I still, I still ponder and think about the how how the earth was back in the day when the Garden of Eden existed. And, you know, I have my own theories and think about, you know, and you imagine things and study God's word and how it was and everything. And, how, you know, when and the, when Adam and Eve were closed off and talks about, you know, uh, the angel with the flaming sword, you know, and everything. I have my thoughts about that, but, you know, not getting into that, but how it was. And then, of course, when the flood came and how, how, you know, cataclysmic that was and how the earth was totally changed after that and, uh, you know, but how beautiful the earth must have been when the garden was there and how the earth look, must have looked back then. But you know, you know, new heavens and a new earth, everything's going to be renewed. Things going to be beautiful. We're going to have new glorified bodies like in the Son of Man. We just have to get through this this time period right here, this reality right here. We've got to make it. Just a short amount of time, people. Just a short amount of time. Come on. We can make it. We can press our way through. We can press against the enemy. Because guess what? We've got God the Father. We've got the Lord Jesus, the Son. The Holy Ghost, don't do anything inside of us. We can press our way through. We can finish this race. We can cross the finish line. Just as Paul talked about, running the race, you know, run his course and finishing the race. We can do it. If we just hold fast to our faith, hold fast to the Lord, cling to Him, cling to your salvation. Don't give up. Don't give in to sin. Don't give in to the enemy. Don't give in to false teaching. Don't believe it. I tell you what to believe, and I'm pointing to the, my online Bible. Believe in that. Cling to the Word of God. I'm a King James Version man. I think that's the Word of God. That's what He gave to us as the Word of God. I see no reason to use any other version. That's the one that He gave to us. As the English speaking people, I see no reason to use any other version because they've changed things, changed wordings, and changed, you know, rearranged scriptures and everything. There's, you know, if anyone wants to use that, you know, that's that's one way to get against 
One way to confuse people is to scramble a bunch of words, change a bunch of words, change verses and everything. And that's what he's done. Cling to the word of God. Cling to the Lord. Cling to your salvation. That's what's going to carry you through. You can stand before the Lord. Eventually you're going to kneel because everybody's going to kneel. And every time he's going to confess that he is King of kings and Lord of lords. But you're going to stand before him and you're going to hear it. Enter into the joys of life. Thou true and faithful servant. But faithful over little is going to make you ruler over much. I'm not going to have to worry about hearing, Depart from me, ye that work in equity, for I never knew you. Hallelujah. Can't wait for that day. Can't wait for that day. Some people say, oh my goodness, you're just, you're just wishing your whole life away by saying that. No. No. <laughs> All I'm saying is I'm ready. I know in my heart because I've asked the Lord for repentance and to save me. So I know I'm ready whenever He is ready for me. Oh, much better to go on than to be down here. Right? Right? <laughs> but to be in a hurry? No. Whenever the Lord's ready. You know, even Paul said it. You know, he had a desire to depart, but he said, hey, it's more needful that I stay down here and be of a help to the churches and to the people. Even though he had that desire to depart, you know, he was ready to depart. But at one point, he knew that his time was near, according to his, his writings. But he was ready to go. Now, we haven't seen, or I, at least I'll speak for myself, I haven't seen near the problems and the things that Paul went through. Or Job. We need to get back into Job, don't we? We can talk about a little bit what Job went through. And ask the question. Anybody went through what oh, uh, Brother Job went through? I hazard to say... Not, not many people out there can raise your hand and say, oh yeah, I went, I went through exactly what Job went through. Really? <laughs> so the Lord has justified us by his death on the cross. Save now. Don't got to worry about hell. Don't got to worry about that lake of fire burning forever. Pain, and torture, and torment. You know heard about people in the hospital that's on their deathbed and they're slipping off into death and they're feeling the flames burning their feet people say oh they're just they're just having you know lights flashes in their mind and it's not no I, they're they're feeling something and they're seeing something just as these people that are saved they're seeing the Lord Jesus and they're seeing the angels coming for them there have been too many people that have went through that and seen that and that's happened and I've heard that and other people that have out of body and near death experiences and that's happened to. There's been too many that's happened to for it to be just things that's going on in their mind or last near death or last minute stuff going on in their mind. Some wild stories out there about that. But people feeling the flames they're, and they're screaming I'm feeling the flames. I'm feeling the flames. And just terrified, screaming. I'll tell you something. Nothing else to the people in that room right there. If I was in there, you talk about you talk about a witness to a lot of people. Let's say some some people would have to would have to leave there. Probably scared out of their senses. The people look. Let me tell you something. And I think we're going to exit out of the scriptures there because we're about ready to close. But let me tell you. We are in the last days. Okay? According to God's word. According to the things that I see going on and you see going on. If you will, as I said, Get God's Word. Read Matthew 24. Read Luke, Mark, Revelation, Daniel, Isaiah. Is the things paralleling God's Word and the things in the world and the things that we're seeing. 
around the last, it said, and it talks about, it said, these things must come. It said, but the end is not yet, okay? But we are seeing the things that are going on in the last days. False teachers, pro false prophets, false Christ are arising. Wars, rumors of wars. Seeing the, the sea and, and the waves roaring and foaming, hurricanes coming. All these other things that it talks about. There's more to follow. Things going on. And it's just part of the watchman part. Now, I don't claim to be the main watchman. Okay, I want to make this clear. Because I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to steal a position or steal my job. Look, at the Word of Life Church, Junior Mount, our, our pastor, he is the watchman on the wall for our church, okay? But I'm a watchman in a different aspect, okay? Have my own little video ministry right here. Seeing things and know things that's coming. That a lot of people probably don't see and don't and have never really thought about. But like I said, there's stuff that I've not been released by the Lord to really talk about or mention or thing yet because it is so out of the norm a lot of people would would probably just shake their head at and thought, okay, well he just done, he just kind of you know, but trust me. But there's things coming, things that's going to happen that people are not going to believe. Things coming upon the earth, men's hearts failing them for fear. Of things coming on the earth. That's Bible. That's scripture. Okay. So get ready, get rooted and grounded in the faith according to God's word. I said we were going to move from scripture. I was talking about the psalm, but you know, I'm bringing in scripture. <laughs> we need to get rooted and grounded in the faith. If you are not, you need to grab on to the Lord, to your salvation. You need to armor up. If you don't have the armor of God on, and you know what I say, you need to put the armor of God on and you need to keep it on. There is no taking it off. Read Ephesians 6. Read about the armor of God. Read about what we're fighting against. Now I know it says our warfare is not carnal. But there are things out there that have, are not, that, that are supernatural. Now I use, I use that word. People don't like using that word because it's been hijacked by some of these other people. But trust me, all it means is that which is above nature. God is above nature, okay? And all some of these other things are above nature. But some of these things are, are, are in the natural, but also in the supernatural as well, okay? That we're going to have to battle against. Read some about it in Revelations, about when the pit is open. So all I'm saying is, is watch just watch when these things start coming when the Lord starts allowing more and more to be told more and more to be said now, I'm not saying I've just got this special knowledge because all this stuff can be found all this stuff can be found in God's word all this stuff is out there if people will just open their minds open their and ask the Lord to show them Lord gives wisdom, he gives spiritual knowledge and the understanding to understand that wisdom and that spiritual knowledge. Just because the Lord has not given me free course to open up that stuff does not mean he won't give it to someone else. But if he gives it to someone else, he might not allow them, as with me, to open up and just let it fly and give it right yet. So that's something I wanted to make clear. And nothing has been, you know, I'm just saying. Just felt impressed of the Lord. I wanted to mention something like that because, you know, when you see stuff coming and you want, you're, you're just like, oh, Lord, please let me just get this out. Let me, you know, do that. But the Lord says, no, hold back. Now is not the right time. But you also want to bring in too, talking about, you know, because 
you know, you want to do the right thing. And say, say and do the right thing. Especially when you're behind someone else's pulpit. You know, you know, just want to do the right thing. Because we love all our brothers and sisters in Christ. We love our pastor. We love our pastor's wife. And would not want to do anything to hurt any one of them. And, or, you know, be against any of them or say anything about it. Because, you know, we just want to do God's will and say what he would have us to do and not go beyond what he would have us to say or do. Never want to do that. Never want to go beyond that. We always want to to stay within his will and within what he would have us to say or do. But first and foremost, it's always, always to seek and save that which is lost. Mission number one. But in tandem with that, and I still want to hear more preaching on this, because this goes along with the pressing against the enemy. It says, in tandem with seek and save that which is lost, said, the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy the works of the enemy. That goes hand in hand with seek and save that which is lost. The two link together. Need to hear more preaching about that. I think sometimes people are afraid to preach on that because people are like, oh, I don't want to take on the enemy because he's going to fight against me. And I'm, no, don't be scared. Do not be scared of the enemy. Fight against him. Fight back against him. Don't worry about what he can do. Lord has got your back. He is behind you 100%. If you're walking in his will, you're saved and walking in his will, he's behind you 100% and he will give you victory. Do not be afraid of the enemy. And all the stuff that he's got. I know he's got stuff. A lot of stuff to throw at you. And that's part of some of the stuff that I was talking about. That I can't release and talk about. But don't worry about there. Because he's got your back. He can take care of it. He's got you. Smack dab right in the middle of your hand. Nothing can snatch you out of his hand. Just don't jump out of his hand. And take off. Amen. Amen. Just wanted to get that out and mention that because I felt impressed of the Lord to do that. So, that's it. That's what the Lord had for tonight. Uh, God bless each and every one of you. And, uh, you know, as, as always, blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you. And, uh, as always, <laughs> blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you. you know, I love y'all. Uh, uh, spiritual warriors meet me on the battlefield uh, let's march and press against the enemy together and uh, let's achieve victory over the enemy like I said don't be afraid don't fear don't fear what he can do the Lord has got us in his hand and he, can, he will give us victory without a shadow of a doubt I know he will and as I always said it's getting closer and closer Get ready, because we're getting ready to get into the spiritual warfare messages for Halloween, or Samhain, as they call it in the pagan circles, satanic circles. Uh, we're going to dig deep into that, as far as I feel led to, and uh, uh, it's almost time. They start early this month. They do, in preparation. You would think, oh, just you know, it's just a, it's just a night. No, they they start in preparation early. And uh, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. So, anyway, take care, and uh, we will uh, see you in the next video. Bye now.